Welcome. When Reverend Meg asked me to do a homily for this month's theme of identity, I began reflecting on where I am. I've been living in Switzerland for the past 14 years in a postcard pretty village of almost 700 people with lots of farm animals and beautiful flower baskets in the windows. It's very different here from the other places I've lived. I've lived in Toronto and Calgary and Winnipeg, Los Angeles, Flint, Michigan, Hoboken, New Jersey. It's very different here. The Swiss have a reputation, maybe you've heard, for being insulated from the outside world, of being maybe unwelcoming or even xenophobic. Many Swiss people have never traveled outside of their own region. Maybe from one town to the next or to the nearest biggest city, but many have never left the country. They've only recently had opportunities to meet people who do not share centuries of ethnic and cultural history with them. And this inherent lack of diversity has been changing only in the past couple of generations, since after the Second World War. There have been waves of migrant workers, first from Italy and then from Turkey, and they leave large pockets of ethnic communities in the cities. And I have some neighbors here whose families come from Sicily. In more recent years, the massive influx of immigrants and refugees from places like Eritrea and Sri Lanka and Syria most recently has shifted the demographics in the country as has the development of globalized industries such as banking and pharmaceuticals, which attract a migrant workforce. It's a small place, Switzerland. It's rooted in traditions and in histories, which adapt very slowly. In Canada, Indigenous people readily share stories handed down by generations of elders. They speak of their lands, and their tribes and their traditions. And in Canada, when you ask non-Indigenous peoples about where their family is from, you may hear several generations of ancestry and cultural blending, stories going back to the first migrants from Europe, India and Asia, how they came and why. I can tell you stories handed down in my own family, uh, one side Icelandic and the other side uh, British. Scottish mix. Very proud identities, very detailed stories about the people who came here. There's a fascination recently with DNA typing and tracing of genealogy. I've had conversations with people like, oh, are you related to the Icelanders from Gimli or from Lundar? And then maybe I'll hear, oh, I went to school with so-and-so. Is she your cousin? And then before long, you're comparing your grandmother's chicken soup recipes and holiday traditions. Now, I recognize the privilege it is to know who my ancestors are and to even be proud of their stories of resiliency and of determination. I recognize that many people don't know who their birth parents were, and so many people, especially people of color, whose ancestors were brought forcibly as enslaved people, or who came not seeking a new land of opportunity, but escape from fearful oppression, only to continue to live in poverty and to be marginalized in a place that had held so much hope for them. I understand that the question of where someone is from can strike a deep and tender place. And the question itself implies that one is not welcome. The Swiss are different from the Canadian and American cultures I grew up with. They are more reserved and private, but there's also a generosity of spirit 
there's an interest and a welcoming nature in the people. It's just expressed differently. With all the movement of people around the world, my little village on a hill, surrounded by forests and fields, it remains largely untouched by the outside world. It was established in 1147. 1147. That is 32 generations of a few families living in the same place. These are the native peoples of this land. If I were to ask them where they are from, they would be confused and they would say, here, I'm from right here. And this makes for a very different understanding of self-identity and of community. Fewer than 10% of the residents in this village were born more than a 30 minute drive from here. These are locals. When people here ask where I am from, it's because I clearly, I clearly am not a native speaker of Swiss dialect or of German. And I look different. I look different than the locals. This question, where are you from? It does imply that I don't belong here, that I'm an outsider. And generally it's not meant as an insult. It's more out of curiosity and I have learned to accept it. I have also accepted that though I've lived in this little Swiss village now longer than any other address I've had in my whole life, and I've even become a Swiss citizen, this, this will never be where I am from. In the same way that Winnipeg, my hometown, is. And this is okay. It really is okay with me because even though this is now my home, who I am is so much more than where I am from or where I may or may not belong. Identity and belonging, they're not the same things. Identity is the collection of your perspectives, of your experiences, and your beliefs about who you are. Identity is your essence, your own story. I was speaking yesterday with a woman who recently moved to my village with her family from South Africa. We were talking about how we came to be here, here of all places in the world that we could have ended up. We were getting to know each other. Meredith told me of her people, her ancestry story. She told me how in the increasingly intolerant Protestant 17th century, a rebellious son of a Dutch reformed preacher left Holland on a merchant ship as the ship's chaplain and eventually landed and settled in South Africa. And then one of his great, great, great granddaughters married a Russian Jew who had fled persecution in the early 1900s. Fascinating stories, vivid stories. Raised during apartheid in South Africa. Today, Meredith, my new friend, identifies strongly with both her Afrikaans and her Jewish heritage. We spoke about how her daughters, both enrolled in local Swiss schools now, will have very different understandings of who they are and different experiences to shape them. As we talked, we talked and we shared stories and we came to realize that who we are, our identities, has actually very little to do with where we are from or with our family histories or our citizenship. Who we are lies in the stories we tell, the stories we tell to others and to ourselves. 
the vignettes of memories where, where we connect to people and places and experiences that have shaped who we have become. Our identities are in what we care about, in, in how we make choices, in how we live our values. Our identities come from within us, not from outside. The I in identity is a clue. I am a sister, a daughter, a wife, a lover of animals and lakes. I, I am kind. I am strong. I am courageous. I love to travel and experience new places, new people, new foods. I am a person of faith, of spirituality. I am at home in many places, and I am not rooted in any. Where am I from? Where am I from? I am from here, right here. Where are you from? Where are you from?